Hey there, booksmiths. My name is Angie, and on this channel, we typically talk about writing fiction using AI tools. Today, however, we're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite tools, Notion. One of your fellow viewers wanted to learn more about Notion, so that's what we're going to do today. I'll also walk you through how I use Notion on a daily basis and how I use it to keep track of my prompts. During this video, I'm going to be sharing this Notion template with you, and you can use it to begin organizing your independent publishing business and life. You'll find the link in the video description below. And as always, you will be able to access the Notion document from this training in the video description as well. Okay, let's begin. Before we go any further, let's talk about what Notion is. So it's a web-based platform that allows you to have documents. On these documents, you have the ability to add different blocks just by hitting the forward slash. And then you can put different blocks on your page. And then that's how you display your information and you organize your information using the blocks. So there's blocks for text. There's blocks for different media. So videos, audio, and images. And you have the ability to put in here databases as well. I'm a huge fan of databases. So I've got databases everywhere. And that's how I actually keep track of a lot of my stuff is I use the databases. There is AI within Notion. There is the ability you can summarize. You can extract action items from like meeting notes. And you can add additional custom instructions that it, you tell the AI to do something specific. And it looks at stuff on your page and it does whatever you tell it to do. So I believe the, the AI within Notion is actually from Claude, but don't quote me on that. I also wanted to say I've been using Notion for about a year now. I've never paid for it. It's not a monthly fee that I pay. I have a free Notion account. Part of the reason I don't use AI is because I don't want to pay for it on Notion, but you have the ability to do that. You also have the ability to upgrade your account. And then there are some pro features that you can use as well. So on this page, you can actually see I have the pages set up like a, a filing system in my navigation here because otherwise I can't find anything. Cause I have so many Notion docs, they're all over the place. So this is how I keep track of all of my stuff. And then you can see through here, these are things that we've shared before. Okay, so let's go. I have my personas that I use with a chat GBT. So I've got those all here. And then I've also got Here's my uh, favorite writing prompts and templates. A lot of the ones from Mira Gold, I've actually copied them. At the back of all of her books is a link to download a PDF. And so all I did was I went to the PDF and downloaded or copied and pasted into these documents her prompts. So they're easier to get to and I don't have to go do it every time. I've also got some story builders that I went ahead and put in here as well. And then if you come over here, you can actually see my big list of prompts. And each one has probably a dozen, if not more, individual prompts on each page. Um, eventually, I'm going to move to a database for my prompts. But for right now, I know where they are. I don't have to worry about trying to find them. Let's go ahead and we are going to look at the second brain. So what exactly is a second brain? I wrote it down here for you. It is a personal knowledge management system based on the book Building a Second Brain by Tiago Forte. So Tiago Forte is a YouTuber and he has studied personal productivity and all sorts of other things. And he's written two books actually on building the second brain. And he also published another one about the para method. I have not read this book. It's highly recommended but I just don't have that kind of time. I'm usually reading books about writing and I think you guys would prefer that I do that kind of thing. So let me walk you through this tool and show you how it works. I created this little Canva document. You can actually come here to the colors and design info. Here is the template. So if you want to go in and edit it with your information, use your colors and use your fonts, have at it. You can also see the colors from the image that is on there now. And you can actually swap that out. This area up here is what's called a cover. 
all you need to do to change it is come here and hit change cover. And then you can either upload one. Now, it, one of the things, one of those plus upgrade things is that you can't have a file larger than five megabytes. Just be cognizant of that. You can also link to an image or you can use Unsplash. You can also reposition the cover. So if it's a, a larger one, you can actually move it around. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. Uh, over here, we actually have an icon. So you can either use an emoji or an icon and you can actually change the color of your icon. So it can either be brown, which actually doesn't look too bad. We will leave it here as brown because I think it, it'll match. Okay. Okay. So I showed you this. This is actually a Pomodoro timer. A lot of people use these and I know I use these if I'm doing a writing sprint. And yes, I do writing sprints using AI. Y you can do it. Let's see. So then I have here are tasks. And I've actually got tasks and I've got projects. And projects are big things that have more than one piece to them. So let's create a new project. And so there's two places you can do it. You can click here and hit new, or you can come over here and hit new. So the project that I am going to put on here is, let's say I write a book. Okay. And then I can attach notes to this. I can say, what is the status of this or, and I can attach tasks to this. I'm not sure why. The, oh, I, okay. I think the progress is actually a roll up. So we will see here in a second. So you can actually on this, you can add a cover and then you can make it pretty. Let's change the color. We'll make it blue. No pink. Yeah. So now we got down here, we've got write our book and then we can come over here and we can create a task. I've actually got a spot here where you can click this button to create a task. You can also click here or you can click here. So let's add a task. This is going to be a task. We're going to do research action date. So this is the date that you'll most likely take action on this. So we'll just set it for tomorrow. A due date we'll put for Monday. Priority. So I've got five different priorities in here, or you can swap them out for whatever works for you. I like to use quick wins for stuff that's going to take max of 10 minutes, something that is really easy. You can knock it out really quickly. And then A is obviously going to be the highest priority e is going to be the less priority. I'm going to go ahead and put this as a B, but yeah, you can go in there and you can change those out to do that. You hit edit property and then you can come in here and make your changes. Or if you only want A, B, C, you can actually delete D and E. So the project for this is going to be write a book. And I also added rewards. I am 100% reward driven. So that's why I added rewards to my second brain. So my status is not started. So I will go ahead and I will close that. So I don't have anything that's due today, so that's why there's nothing on here for the task for today. Now, if I look at the next seven days, I can see that tomorrow I actually have this research task that I need to do. There's also the ability to check and see what needs review. So if you have items on here that don't have dates assigned to them, or if they don't have projects assigned to them, they'll show up here under needs review. And that way you can add the additional information that you need. And also I have a calendar and you can come down here and see that my research task is a priority of B and it is not started. I think there's one more. Oh, yep. Here's a list of all the tasks. Oh, and apparently I left some stuff in there. I need to go delete that. Okay, so let's come down here to notes. So we've got projects, we've got tasks. And remember, you can create tasks over here as well. Uh, you also have the ability to add notes. I, I already showed you this one here that's got the information about the template as well as the design information. 
There's also, I created one here for you with some Notion resources. So the Notion YouTube channel, Thomas Frank is a Notion guru. So I put one of his playlists and then I also gave you Productive Dude. He has a YouTube channel and he has a lot of good stuff. I like his videos on databases. But like I said, you can actually assign them to projects if you uh, want to do that. You can also attach documents. So if you have a copy of your book cover that you want to uh, put in here, you can just add the file. Just make sure that the file is under five megabytes. And then I also set it to where you have the ability to have a favorite. And then favorites actually show up all the time. And then we've got recent notes. So these I think are within the last two weeks. Let me check. Oh, okay, apparently I locked it. Uh, I think it's either in the last week or last two weeks. It'll show up on recent notes. Uh, needs review. So these are the ones where I believe uh, if there is no project attached, it'll show up on needs review. And then also a list of all notes. Okay. And then I actually just added this today. I added a reading list. So if you want to add a book or multiple books, you can actually add them to your reading list. So all books to be read and recently read. And then over here on the quick capture, I wanted it to be like super easy for you to capture ideas as you had them. I know as someone with ADHD, if I don't write down when I have an idea, then I'm worried about it sticking in the brain, the back of my brain and me forgetting it. So it's really important for me to capture ideas very quickly and then I can process them later. So it doesn't necessarily mean I have to do anything with it. It just means that I have to put it somewhere. And this is, again, a second brain. So this is where I, one of those places where I can put it. So we've got add task. We can add a note. We can also add ideas and add a book and that adds your book to your reading list down here. So let me show you. I didn't put the ideas on this page because I didn't want them to be in front of you all the time. But let's come down here. So you have two ways of looking at this. You can either look at it through your database. Again, do not delete your databases or it will break everything. Uh, so you have your idea index. So here we go. You can come here and add your idea. You can put what genre it is. I'm assuming it's going to be a book idea, but it, it also could be, do you have a blog post idea? Do you have a newsletter idea? Anything like that. The priority, the status. So there's a couple statuses, idea, outlining, drafting, editing, published or archived. And then just some basic information about either the idea or the storyline or whatever, just to get it out of your head again. So it's not sitting in the back of your mind and taking up space. So if you add a item that you don't really want, you can go ahead and click here and hit delete. Okay. So let's go back. I can open this up over here. I also added a word tracker. So I, I do actually, when I'm writing a lot, I will keep track of my words. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Clifton Strengths, but my number one strength is actually competition. So things where I can see numbers going up. And so like my word counters going up definitely gets me really excited and is a way for me to stay motivated. But you can come in here and hit new, put the date your word count, and then you can actually put any kind of notes about your writing session. And then I've got it set to count your words there. There are much better word trackers out there, ones that take into account if you're doing sprints, like writing sprints and stuff like that. This one's very simple, but you can always swap it out with something that you want. Okay, so we did look at the idea index. Let's look at the rewards. Let's look at here. So here is where you put the reward name. So X, you can put whether or not you completed it, the task, as well as actually, actually, you attach it to the task, research. And then when you complete the task, it actually shows up here. And then when you 
I've earned it, you can check it off, and then it won't show up on the list anymore. Okay. Let's delete that out. Okay. The reading list. Oh, the other thing I didn't talk about is this section here. It's called daily journal, but it's it's basically it's habit tracking. Did you brush your teeth? Did you exercise? You can actually swap these out and change them for other names. There are seven. I don't recommend removing any because then you have to edit the code because I actually have a formula in here that tracks the status percentage. So I, I recommend sticking with seven because otherwise you have to change the status. And actually I don't here, you would just change it right here. Okay, so hit done. Because yeah, it, it uses formulas. And it'll sh this will go up as uh, you add things. It go the percentage goes up. Okay. I feel like we covered everything on this template. You can add links here to go to other places. But yeah, I think we, we covered this pretty well. I am going to create another video tomorrow on going deeper into Notion and how to basically how to create these pages. So this page is a bunch of callouts and databases and buttons and links. And it looks really complicated, but it really, after you've done it for a little while, it's not quite so complicated. But I definitely want to have you guys feel empowered that if you decide to use this or you decide to go and either, I can tell you, I've purchased Notion templates, none that were all that expensive, but I know that when I get a template, it usually isn't exactly what I want. And then I have to go in and I have to change it. We're going to break for today. I think we are at a good place and we'll pick up tomorrow and I'll have a Notion document for you tomorrow as well to be able to go through that. Thank you guys for watching the video. Take a moment, leave me a comment. Do you guys use Notion? What do you think? Are you interested in trying out this template uh, or going and finding? There's tons of free ones. Let me know what you think. I definitely enjoy this program. It's great to be able to share it with people as well. So have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your evening or your day, wherever you are in the world. And we'll see you next time.